Everything Allah commands to be will always become a reality. Everything Allah commands to be will always become a reality. Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to a new episode of Contemporary Fiqh Issues. We have with us again in the studio our special guest, Sheikh Asim bin Luqman al Hakim. Sheikh Asim, welcome. Jazakumullah khair and thank you for having me. Barakallahu feekum. Sheikh Asim is one of the well known speakers and callers who has traveled extensively across the globe giving dawah and delivering lectures to both Muslims and non Muslims alike. Sheikh Asim, the we were dealing with the last episode in the issues of insurance, which you mentioned deals with riba, it deals with usury, it deals with gambling. There's another modern day phenomenon that Muslims unfortunately have become involved in and that didn't necessarily exist in its exact form in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu and that is the phenomenon of credit cards. But before we get into that, we'd like to just go over briefly the issue of borrowing. What's the ruling of borrowing in Islam, borrowing money? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله الأمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Borrowing in Islam, generally speaking, is permissible. Not like a lot of the Muslims may think that it is something that we should avoid and it's not permissible, it's not recommended. Well, generally speaking, it is permissible simply because the Prophet did it عليه الصلاة والسلام and he borrowed. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he died with his shield being as a guarantee with a Jew when the Prophet took in exchange of it some form of uh, barley or, or food. Mm -hmm. So borrowing generally speaking is permissible. However, it can be mandatory if you want to protect yourself, defend yourself or to have a treatment that cannot be possible without money and you have to borrow. So then borrowing here becomes mandatory. It can be forbidden mm -hmm. when you borrow to buy something that is haram mm -hmm. or to use it in haram. It can be recommended when you want to uplift your situation by trading, by uh, engaging in transactions and you don't have the capital for it. But this is something that is, inshallah, will generate money for you and for the welfare of your family. And it can be not recommended makruh if it is used for extravagant and just for showing off and boasting among your peers. So it depends here and there. Unfortunately, nowadays, the Muslims have indulged in borrowing blindly. And they have more what, what they can shoe. They just borrow for their houses, for the cars, for their travels, and end up at the end of the year with debts and complex interest, which is riba. And Allah Azza wa Jal made riba one of the most major sins in Islam, mm -hmm. which is usury, which is paying interests for loans and uh, uh, etc. Therefore, and, and this is quite widely spread in, in lots of countries where they have mortgages. They s insist on buying a house by mortgage and they end up paying interest and involved, being involved in riba. And this is definitely something that is not permissible in Islam. Barakallahu feekum, Shaykh. So then you discuss with us the issue of borrowing and how in general borrowing is allowed. You can borrow from people as long as you're going to pay back and you're not paying back, I assume, more than what you borrowed. So where, does, where do credit cards fall in this? What is a credit card exactly? Well, a credit card is a, just a plastic magnetic card, mm -hmm. usually, or a metal card that is issued from an institution, a financial institution, which is usually a bank. Mm -hmm. And it is being issued either for free or for an annual fee. And it gives the right to the card holder, and this right is given to him by this institution to borrow 
to a particular limit, a ceiling where he can uh, buy things or lease things without ha being uh, 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 compelled to pay it instantly. He has what is known as the grace period mm -hmm. and afterwards he has to pay interest if he does not pay it back within this grace period. Which is explicitly haram. Which interest. is definitely haram because in anything, any kind of loan that draws interest is considered to be forbidden in Islam. Okay, so you mentioned Barakla Fikum that credit card is just, it's a piece of plastic, a magnetic piece of plastic. But there's other types of cards around. We have debit cards and so on and gift cards. Are these also all haram? Well, usually the banks issue a different number of cards. So we have the credit cards, the conventional credit cards, Visa, MasterCard, Diners Club, mm -hmm. American Express, mm -hmm. etc. And then you have something that is known as debit cards. And they are different than credit cards because they don't actually, actually lend you money. They hold your money. And then whenever you purchase something, they take it from what they have held for you. So basically, instead of running around with all this cash in your pocket, you just hold one card. And if you lose it, you don't actually lose the money. You just lose the that card, card itself. Yeah. Yes. This is, uh, uh, and this is the most safe uh, um, um, card available because you're not borrowing. So whatever fees they charge you, it's not something they ch are charging to lend you money. It is a, a service fee, which is halal. For the cost of having a bank or having the machine and all this and the maintenance of the machine. Yes, this is true. Third type of, of cards are the ATMs, which are the conventional uh, automatic teller machine uh, mm -hmm. uh, cards, where you just simply go with your bank account card and you insert it and you can withdraw from your own account. Not unlike a debit card. No, because this is your... Well, it's similar mm -hmm. in a sense, but in debit card, the bank has all the right to block this amount of, let, let's say, $5,000, which you've charged your debit card with. Mm -hmm. So my debit card is good for $5,000. Once the $5,000 are over, then that's it. that is it. it mm -hmm. It's blocked. While in the ATM, it depends on how much money I have in my actual bank account. Okay. So I, might, I may have 100000 I wish I do. And I may have only $500. Mm -hmm. So in either case, I cannot do anything except with what, what is actually there. Okay. And these, this would be legitimate, assuming obviously your bank account doesn't have uh, interest in itself. So yes. you're just storing your money there because of necessity. You want to keep your money safe from fire, from theft. So you're storing your money in the bank. And this card is just facilitating access to that money. That's true. And there's a fourth type of credit cards, and that is what is known as the Islamic credit cards. And may, we may have to go and uh, elaborate a bit on that later on. We might have to put the quotation marks too for some of them. <laughs> yes. Okay, but now how does somebody go around to get, going back to credit cards, how does somebody go and get a credit card? Don't they have to agree to a certain terms or a contract? How, how does one do this? It, it, there are two types of credit cards. One that is awarded to you free the minute you reach a certain ceiling in, in, in your bank account. So if you exceed this, they give you as a complimentary uh, um, gift, a credit card without any fees. Mm -hmm. And the other one is just to simply go and apply for one from a bank. Mm -hmm. And you have to fi uh, fill up a, a big form with lots of fine print mm -hmm. into it. And you sign it as a form of agreement. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, this agreement is stating that you allow the bank to charge you interest rates, which is riba, if you pass the, the grace period, which is 40 or 45 days. Depending so if you, don't pay, yeah, if you don't pay back, they're going to charge you interest, whether it's 4% or 7% or whatever percent there is. And of course, this is not permissible in Islam. And whoever agrees on this would be agreeing on paying riba. So even if somebody, let's say somebody's very careful, they're always going to pay on time, or they won't even use the card unless they actually have the money in their pocket so they can pay it right away. 
just to have just the agreement in itself is not permissible for, for the Muslim to you're agreeing on a sin mm -hmm. so it's like someone says listen if you don't pay on time I'm gonna chop your right hand first I say, yeah I have no problem and, and I signed it and I know that I'm gonna pay it on time some scholars say no say yes if you know for sure or you charge your credit card ahead of time so that whenever you purchase something they're gonna uh, um, uh, take it off your, what you've charged earlier. Some scholars say that this is permissible. But unfortunately, being practical, nobody does this. So it seems kind of redundant to ask though, but seeing how the contract itself to get a credit card is impermissible from the major opinion or from what we see as the more correct opinion, then are credit cards permissible? If with the following um, criteria, no, they're not. But if they follow these two conditions, which is you cannot issue a credit card that is uncovered. Mm -hmm. And it's not permissible for you to deal with unless the bank would not take any extra percentage, whether you're late or not. Mm -hmm. If this is the case, then this is permissible. Secondly, it must not be charged from you as a customer a great amount of money for issuing this card. Mm -hmm. Because again, this is a credit card. You're borrowing. So if I, and this, we have this in, in, in Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. we have banks like al Rajhi Bank, for example, al Bilad Bank. They issue credit cards and they give you a grace period. But if you don't pay in this period, they block the card. Okay, and they so they, they stop you basically from using it until you've paid them back. Yes, but they don't charge you one extra penny over what you have borrowed from them. Mashallah. This is completely legitimate. Now, the second condition is that when you get these cards, they usually give or take from you an annual fee. Mm -hmm. This annual fee should be realistic in the sense that... Cover the expenses. Yes. So if they tell you that I'll give you a platinum card for $200 a year mm -hmm. and a golden card for 150 and a silver card for $100, why is the difference? Mm -hmm. They should be the same because it's, it's the same, the same paperwork. So the difference means that no, they're charging you more because of the ceiling and the amount you're allowed to borrow is different. Barakallahu feekum, Shaykh, inshallah, we'll continue on this discussion, but uh, right after we go to the break, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome all of you to another exciting and new episode of your program. Let's talk. If we listen to someone talking about Islam, we should really know their credentials and if they really are the experts they say they are. This man is an expert in Islamic Sharia. <laughs> it's crazy. They use the knowledge for the sake of Allah. Media with its emphasis, with its agenda, with the spin. Okay, you guys, today we're going to talk about a very important topic that has been neglected by Muslims around the world. And they would say, Whatever happening in Somalia is a Somali problem. Whatever's happening in Pakistan is a Pakistani problem. Islam doesn't forbid people to, to adhere to technology. You guys at home, you hear the doctor. He's telling you guys to be environmentally friendly, go pick up trash, plant a tree, do something good for the environment. It is our responsibility as The Sheikh told us about two Egyptians who decided to move on the spot right. to look at the problem. I like the the extreme sports yeah right and i tried to search what it is yeah and i okay. know this is a cold punch we hugged each other and he said Bakr is my my best friend <laughs> Assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Sheikh Hassam, just before the break, you were discussing the issue of credit cards 
and their place in Islam and usury and making agreements upon usury and haram. What if an individual, for example, already owns a credit card? They already got past the agreement part where they agreed to do haram, but they're paying on time. Can they buy things with this credit card as long as they're not paying before they actually have the money? Can they buy anything? Can they even buy gold and silver with it? Well, you have to understand that if you have already gone into this agreement and you have the actual credit card and you are 110% sure that you'll pay on time. And I know a lot of people that do pay on time and not wait for the 30, for the 40 days uh, uh, or 45 days grace period. Mm -hmm. They pay immediately. Mm -hmm. Some people even before traveling, they would deposit in their credit card account mm -hmm. 10,000 uh, reals, for example, or $4,000, knowing that they will not buy anything, they will not use more than this. So basically they're using it like a debit card. Yes. And, and this, if this is the case, this is okay, providing that the fee that they take annually is not exaggerated. It is realistic. In where I come from, they charge for the a credit card uh, annual fee an amount of uh, approximately like 35 to $50. A year. A year, which is Acceptable. Nothing. Yes. What about some ATM machines though that charge like $10 just to take money out one time? Well, again, this is not realistic. Mm -hmm. The Islamic scholars uh, that are experts on such topics gathered and said that charging 37 reals or $10 is not realistic. Mm -hmm. the, comp the, the, the bank is benefiting and the realistic amount they say that might go down to five to seven dollars. Mm -hmm. So this is the amount that should be charged. I personally think that again taking cash from an ATM uh, uh, machine with your credit card and giving this interest or this service fee is not permissible. Mm -hmm. This is my own opinion because what you're actually doing is borrowing from the bank 5,000 uh, uh, Egyptian pounds, 3,000 uh, Saudi rials, whatever, and you're paying this $10 to the bank. Mm -hmm. So you're actually borrowing because you don't have money yet. Mm -hmm. And you're hoping that hopefully when I go back three, four weeks later, I'm going to pay them off. Mm -hmm. So the money, that, the money, the service charge that you've paid is for the money they uh, uh, lent you. And I feel that this is not uh, a safe thing to do and one should not do this. Going back to your question, can a person buy anything with credit cards? providing that it's halal, yes, you can. But gold and silver is the exception. They are the exception. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because it falls under the categories of riba. The Prophet said, والسلام, that there are six types or six categories that can fall or can um, be the umbrella of riba transactions. Mm -hmm. Gold, silver, wheat, barley, um, salt and dates. Things where the prices fluctuate and... These are the six items that the Prophet mentioned, salam, regardless of the price. Mm -hmm. Scholars, when looking at them, they said that gold and silver is a category by itself because it's monetary. It's what, what people buy and sell things with. Mm -hmm. And the other four are things that are eaten or consumed and weighed at the same time. Mm -hmm. So riba goes in these two categories. Anything that we buy and sell with is considered to be under the umbrella of gold and silver. Mm -hmm. So dollars, euros, reals are all considered to have the same um, uh, concept. Because they're all basically paper representing gold and silver that should be in a deposit. Somewhere. This was the case 20 or 30 years ago. Now it's not. It's the value of the country that is producing this. So dollars now, they don't have any gold representing the, the dollar banknotes. Mm -hmm. so it's, it's just they've been printing it and printing it. It's the value of the, con the country and its, its economy. Mm -hmm. However, when I go to a shop and I buy a necklace mm -hmm. for my wife with my credit card, the necklace is gold. And one of the main important conditions in buying gold is that it should be 
in the same transaction place. Mm -hmm. So I give you the money, you give me the gold. It's not permissible that I tell you, okay, I like this bracelet, how much it cost? You tell me it's a hundred dollars. I said, okay, I bought it. I'll, I'll have it, I'll give it to you in a couple of hours. I'll just go and get my wallet. Mm -hmm. This is per not permissible because it has to be in the same location. Could that be because the price of gold may change over time? So if you return the money after a week, the price of that gold is different, no? The, log the justification is not mentioned in the hadith, mm -hmm. but we know that it is one of the means that, de that leads to riba. Mm -hmm. And that is why the Prophet ﷺ prevented it completely. So when I buy this necklace of gold with my credit card, mm -hmm. I did not give the, ma the man his money on the spot. Mm -hmm. He has to wait two, three, maybe a week to get his money from the bank and it may come and may, it may not come. Yeah. So this transaction is not valid. Barakallahu ya Shaykh. So then what about um, some companies or banks or credit card companies that offer gifts? If you get a card, you get a gift provided you, you purchase their card and you use their card. Are these gifts permissible? I mean, we know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam accepted gifts from Muslims and non-Muslims alike. Do you have to accept the gift even? Are you talking about credit cards as a gift or as any gift that the bank gives for opening an account, for example? For opening the account, for using the credit card. Come, some credit cards, the more you use it, for example, they give you points like towards a free uh, flight. Okay. They give you, let's say, a uh, iPod or laptop. Okay. For the gifts that the bank gives over your usage of their credit card, this is permissible. Mm -hmm. Because they're not borrowing from you, you are borrowing from them. So it's forbidden for you to give them the interest, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. For example, if I give you a thousand dollars as a loan, and I give you on top of the thousand dollars my car to use, this is permissible. There's nothing wrong in that. Mm -hmm. The other way around is forbidden. If I give you a thousand dollars as a loan and you give me your car to use until you pay back the money. Rather, they even, they demand it, for example. They say, you have to give me a gift. This is complete riba. So in the case of credit cards, whatever gift, gifts the, 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 the bank gives to you, it's halal. Mm -hmm. There's no harm in, in accepting it. But in the case of opening a bank account, it's mm -hmm. different. Because once I open a bank account, I'm actually lending the bank $100,000, so which is the amount. So whatever they give me, they're giving it to me on top of my loan to them, which would be considered a uh, uh, usury. Riba, in Riba. other words, because they're benefiting from your money. They're lending it to other people, getting more money back, and they're giving you that gift as a little extra for lending them the money. Regardless whether they're benefiting or not, mm -hmm. the minute they took it, it's a loan. They're not, whether they deposit it, they put it in a box, they utilize it, it's a loan because even if the bank was burnt to the ground, they will come and pay me the money. Mm -hmm. That is why it's not a deposit. It's, they're not guardians of the money. Yes. They're actually, in, in effect, in Islamic uh, point of view, they're actually being lent the money so that they have to pay it back no matter what. That's, that's true. Barakallahu feekum, ya Shaykh. So now we know that credit cards in general from MasterCard, American Express, Visa, all these credit cards have the condition of riba. They have the condition of usury, which as we know is a major sin. It's, a, it's making war with Allah and His Messenger, which is a very serious issue. The, you mentioned briefly for us in the beginning of the episode about Islamic credit cards and how some uh, Islamic institutes are actually promoting this. But we know from previous talks with you, Barakallahu feekum, that some people come under the image of Islam to take the Muslims who are sincere and try to take advantage of them. How do we know what a real Islamic credit card is as opposed to a fake one? This is true, unfortunately, that there are lots of abuse to the word Islamic. And we have Islamic acting. And soon we will have Islamic belly dancing. We have Islamic music. Yes, or Islamic music like they, the, the, the Nasheed people do nowadays with, with guitars and, and the lyrics are okay, but the music is haram. Likewise in credit cards, the, con the Islamic banks came to the idea of trying to find a way out. Mm -hmm. They made ishtihad, they gave the effort, but unfortunately it was not suitable. 
they came up with a solution which is exactly like the conventional credit cards, mm -hmm. which is a grace period. And after that, if you do not pay on time, they're going to charge you more. Mm -hmm. But instead of charging you more bluntly, they have you sign a contract at the very beginning, mm -hmm. stating that if you're late, 40 days late, and you have to pay them, for example, $5,000, and you didn't pay it on time, mm -hmm. you give them the authority to buy merchandise from XYZ. So they just play around with it. Yeah. They take and then other halal things. They like give you a power of attorney to sell it to someone else and collect the money and then have it in installments over you. So, so instead of $5,000 to be paid on the spot, you don't have money, they make this long loop transaction and then you end up by paying them 6500 on installments. Every month you pay a fixed amount of money. Sort of a sophisticated loophole that they're trying to yeah, make. Yeah, but this is completely forbidden because it's a trick and scholars said that it is you haven't seen the merchandise that they bought on your behalf and you haven't seen those who bought it off them on your behalf all what you've seen is money going out from your bank account and coming back again to be installed into months and it might in that case might be even more severe because they're trying to trick Allah's law Definitely like, like it is. the people, the children of Israel tried to do when they were forbidden to work or fish on uh, the day of Saturday. That's true. Barakallahu feekum, ya Sheikh. So you mentioned then the Islamic credit card would basically be giving you a grace period and if you can't pay on time, they stop you from using the card until you can pay them. This is the proper way of doing it and I, to my knowledge only two banks uh, does this and it's in Saudi Arabia. I don't think anyone else elsewhere does this. That they have the intention of benefiting people without making money out of them. May Allah correct our affairs inshallah and mm -hmm. make it easy for the Muslims and make the Islamic uh, solutions widespread and help us rid corruption and evil from our societies. Barakallahu feekum Shaykh Asim. It's always a pleasure having you. We're just about out of time. Join us please again next week. Uh, Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You can try to hold back the wave, but they will always wash upon your feet. Two waters flow with a barrier in between, the salty sea and rivers fresh and sweet. Everything Allah commands to be will always become a reality. Everything Allah commands to be will always become a reality. Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala. Allah.